How you doing? Doing good. You know, we're about to get hit with a major storm. So I know, I know. It's nice to be inside. Right, but right. It's, it's awesome. I mean, what, 300 web performance experts yeah. in a room together? Yeah. It's it's like heaven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, let's, let's sort of like step back a bit and introduce yourself for the, uh, you know, eager audience here. Hi, so I'm Pat Meenan. I uh, work on the Chrome loading team. So trying to make the browser faster. Uh, also created web page tests. Uh, and no big deal. He just created web page tests. No big so deal. Been working on, I don't know, web performance for 20, 25 years. Wow. So it feels like it's one of those guaranteed employment jobs where we make things faster, the web gets a little slower, and we just have more opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I was just talking to Annie Sullivan and... Uh, you know, we we're talking about Chrome, and I said that Chrome celebrated 15 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. It, it, it's one of those, has it only been 15 years that Chrome's been a thing? It, it, it feels like it's been so much longer. I mean, 15 years is a lot. And I, I don't think I was paying attention when it came aboard, you know, because I was, I don't know. I feel like I went from IE from Mac right into Safari. You know, that's what I was using. And actually, before that, I was probably like a Netscape guy. Actually, I, I know I was a Netscape guy. Netscape Navigator, right? Absolutely. So, exactly. Yeah. You know, so which And it, it feels like that was like 30 years ago to me. Yeah. <laughs> that, that that does feel like a little while ago, so, but it, it was a little fun. Um, I mean, you know, for those who might not know, like, how did you get your start? Like, were you always working on browsers? No. Um. So... Jeez, way back in the day, even before I was at AOL, um, I worked at a company called Floppy Shots. And so what we did was we built software for um, film photo publishers that would process your film and create your photos and you would get your packs of photos back. And we would create the software that would scan the film so you could get a floppy disk with your photos bought on it. Wow. Uh, in the photo CD. Yeah time yeah and so one of the things that we started to do there was oh we should because the internet was becoming a thing it's like well we should let them have their own online photo galleries where they can deliver the photos to users okay and so these are the dial-up days and so it was the beginning times of well how do we make it performant for people to get their their photos um online yeah. instead of on disk and so that was kind of the start, and then I went from there to AOL, and at AOL I was working on the connectivity team. So the the the, the sounds that you make when you're logging in, the modems, that was the parts that I would work on. Oh, wow. So from that point on, it was l largely I was focused on networking performance and web performance. How do we make the web inside of AOL faster uh, for the users over the networking stack, the proxies, um, all sorts of stuff that you see coming again now. Yeah. Um, reducing the quality of images on the web to make them load faster. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that. Wow. Okay. I never got all that part. Yeah, and so web page test came out of that time as well. It's we had so the developers at AOL building the website yeah. that our our customers would use. Um, our offices were across the street from our data center on really fast connection. Oh my God. And at the time, the only browsers that had dev tooling was Firefox uh, with, uh, I can't even remember, the Gecko debugger and things. So all of the developers would be using Firefox on a LAN connection to the data center. So everything was obviously fast. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but all of our users, the embedded browser in AOL was Internet Explorer mm. over a modem. And so... Mm. There, there was the disconnect between what the developers would see and what the users would feel. And so the initial versions of web page tests, and even before that, it was a an IE plugin called page test. I remember that part. Um, which let you simulate a slow connection in IE and see what the user experience felt like. And web page tests just kind of grew out of that. Wowzers. Oh, wow. A little bit of history, folks. So... Enough about web page test. Currently, um, what what is one of your favorite projects that you're working on? 
So right now, compression dictionaries, without a doubt. So okay. I'll be talking about it tomorrow here. Um, it's in Origin Trials in Chrome right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we have tried, I'd say for the last 10 years, uh, to have a dictionary-based compression version of Brotly or GZIP or whatever you want to say to allow you to deliver just Delta updates of JavaScript or mm -hmm. to better compress your HTML. And we think, so over the years, there have been privacy attacks, security attacks against encryption and compression uh, that have blocked our ability to do it well. I think we finally cracked the nut now. We're working through the standards processes and everything else, but the returns are really promising. We're seeing 60 to 80% smaller uh, HTML and JavaScript compared to even the best levels we get with Brotly. Wow. It's kind of like the next step in uh, compression evolution to make all of that JavaScript we ship smaller so more room for more JavaScript. <laughs> exactly, right? You know, like, come on down. We got some room right here. So let me ask you this. Um, is this going to be some kind of like, uh, like an updated version of Broadly? Like, how is this going to be? Like, how is this going to look it's in not, the DevTools? Yeah, it's not specific to Broadly. Both Broadly and Z standards support dictionary compression. And it's not like a new version. It's it's a new like an update coding, okay. Um, but that it's negotiated between the browser and the site uh, specifically. So it's the site needs to be aware and publish like this is my dictionary for my HTML that has all of the common template stuff that my HTML does. Yeah. And then the browser will automatically use it, and the servers will automatically compress using that. Um, so. To some extent, it can become transparent, depending on how much the CDNs and servers adopt it. Um, but it's also going to be in build tooling, uh, like when you do your bundles and things like that. Your bundles are now going to be able to create Delta compressed versions against previous versions of the bundles. And so the bundle tooling will get updated to build these dips uh, that can be sent down. And so it's not as transparent as like a Brotly or a GZIP was. It has some state that needs to be managed and the ecosystem around it sort of needs to be built up. Wow, that sounds wild. I mean, you know, I was gonna stop you soon, so I was like, hey, no spoilers for tomorrow, you know? That's all right. <laughs> but, um, so here's a quick question then. Um, GZIP, Brotly still around, or GZIP specifically, should, I mean, is there room for GZIP still, or should it just be a broadly story? If no, I'm I mean, still, I'm saying they they have their their benefits. Yeah. So broadly tends to be more CPU intensive than oh. GZIP. Oh. Yeah, so on servers, there are times. I think Z standards probably a better comparison for what might be a GZIP replacement. Mm. Um, on the client side. Odds are most of the traffic is already being shipped um, broadly and soon see standard. Mm. Um, GZIP is there more as a backup for the origins that don't support one of the others because they tend to provide better compression. They're newer um, for the same CPU overhead. Um, so there are very few use cases where you'd explicitly want to use GZIP when you had an option to Got use broadly or Z standard. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, uh, you know, GZIP had a good run. But, I mean, you know, there's still what the uh, Space Space Jam 1980 website is still live. Oh, that's true. And so... Is know, it? So I got to double check. They moved it. They, yeah. they changed the URL, but it's still live. Okay. Um, so the web at large is very backwards compatible. And so my guess is browsers will continue to support, support GZIP. I wouldn't expect new things being deployed would largely be using GZIP. But yeah. there is a, a large portion of the web that still exists that happens to use it. Yeah, I mean, you know, H1.1, I still see dot t tens of it out there. So, you know, not surprised. Awesome. And there's increasingly less HTTP. It's mostly HTTPS. But, yeah. you know, there will always still be some remnant of HTTP out there. Absolutely. And, you know, I always occasionally bump into it. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, are you and serious? At a minimum, 
something that you can use to test your hotel login. <laughs> so I use never SSL every now and then. So that website will obviously always be HTTP. Uh, that's so funny. Uh, okay, final question. And folks, this is a funny one. Um, how's the Porsche? Ah, I, I still love it. I mean, electric, no maintenance, handles great. I mean... Folks, it, this, is, this, this is funny because... Uh, where were we? Oh, I was in D.C. for a conference, and uh, I rode in the EV Porsche. And honestly, I've never been like, I've never had that sensation where my stomach was just going to fall out. Like, that thing picked up. Well, and that's not a Porsche thing. That's an EV thing. So, just about every EV will do the same thing. And Wow, <laughs> that was pretty crazy. That's that's. Once you've driven EVs, you get spoiled with the, the responsiveness of the accelerator. Yeah. So you touch the pedal, they move. There's no spin up. <laughs> there's no lag. Uh, even the the Chevy Bolt, like some of the cheapest EVs, all have that instant response yeah. uh, and move like crazy. Oh, uh, that's so crazy. I drove my brother's Tesla and he's got the sport edition. I was always kind of careful. But I've oh, never like gunned you need it. To, you need to just put the foot down and see what it does. Because Pe the and metal are actually even faster. Oh, that was scary. I'll be <laughs> honest. I held on to that little thing right here. I was like, oh my God. I'd never been in that kind of like and to be sensation. Clear, we accelerated fast. We didn't drive fast. Yes, so it's true. We stayed legal. It, it, it was a little crazy, folks. So, Mr. Meenan, thank you very much for your time as always. Awesome. It was I did, uh, Oh, absolutely. The conference. Oh, I told you, I mean, I've been watching it from about back here, so it's been good. And I can actually watch the stream uh, in my little corner. Ah. So, but I just want to make sure I'm all set up so that when people come by, I'm ready. You <laughs> awesome. know, so. Well, hey, chatting. thank you very much. That, ladies and gentlemen, that was Mr. Patrick Meaning, the Patrick Meaning. He of web page says he of a lot of browser things, as you heard. All right. See you around. And his, his talk is going to be streaming tomorrow, so make sure you tune in if you can. Thank you, Mr. Meenan.